Hi everyone, welcome back to Book and Bujo. I'm Debbie, and today I am diving into the fantasy realms of Kingfall by David Estes. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any other bookish reviews and recommendations. So this will be a spoiler-free review, but if you would like a spoiler-filled review, let me know and I will be happy to put one together for you. Kingfall is the first book in the Kingfall Histories by David Estes. It is an enchanting blend of magic, adventure, and intrigue. Be bright, but do not burn. Embrace the darkness, but do not live in the shadows. The powerful god blades were believed to be lost nearly half a millennium ago when the God's War ended. Now, however, one has been found by the unlikeliest of Samson Guard, a sheltered prince who's been told he'll never rule Teravinen. As his powers grow, the only question is whether he controls the blade or the blade controls him. With an insidious evil lurking in the shadows, the answer may very well determine the fate of all Kingfall. Kingfall by David Estes introduces readers to a rich and immersive fantasy world filled with political intrigue, magic, and memorable characters. Set in the kingdom of Kingfall, the story unfolds with a backdrop of impending war and shifting alliances, where the characters must navigate their paths and secure their futures. The story centers around all of Kingfall and the reintroduction of the God Blades, which introduces us now to our main characters. We have King Kronos Guard, and his children, Amari, Samson, and Gerard, Roman, who is kind of a protector and helper for Samson Guard. And then we are introduced to Aisling Brightshine, Commander Andovier Helm, Peony Normandian, and Dragonmaster Dane. And each of these characters find themselves in a conflict of some kind, where their decisions are going to shape the future for either good or for evil. There are fights that are brimming all around and war is coming. The search for the long lost god blades and the lesser blades has begun. Each kingdom hoping to come out on top by finding one of the blades. So the story starts out with Samson Guard and Roman as they are searching for more Maginum. Maginum is the magical element in the world. They are searching for Maginum for the Teravinan kingdom. This section of Samson's is chock full of twists and very interesting things happening happening right from the get-go within the first couple chapters you are hooked and ready for the rest of the book to happen. Samson is blind and he has kind of a protector or guide mentor friend named Roman who has been assigned to Samson to keep him safe and to teach him and guide him and we follow Samson and Roman as they are looking for more Maginum, which is the powder that is used by the mages so that they can do magic. Now, Maginum isn't super rare, but it's not easy to find either, and they do have to mine for it like we would mine for silver or gold, you know, precious jewels, things like that, even coal. Now, Samson is the middle child of King Kronos Guard, and his siblings, Amari, who is the oldest, is his sister, and then the youngest brother is Gerard. And Amari and Samson just clicked. And poor Gerard is kind of left on his own quite a bit and picked on by the other two. Even though Samson is the one that has a physical disability, Gerard is the one that they see as weak. Now, Samson is off to prove himself. Samson is leading this quest for Maginum because he is not afraid to work hard. Even though he has a disability, he does not let that control his life. Now, the first chapter has a lot that happens in it. Of course, we're just getting introduced to the world. We're getting introduced to some characters and we are being introduced to the quest that they are on for finding more Maginum. But there's, there's, there's a lot that happens. <laughs> Good chapter. And then we move into chapter two, where there we meet Captain Andover Helm. And he is from just outside of Kingsport on the Odinian side of the vein. He is the leader of the military of their land. And he has a wife named Moira and two young children. And the kingdom he's a part of and the kingdom of King Kronos Guard aren't on friendly terms, we'll say. 
there's there's definitely some bad blood between them always waiting for the other to attack and we get action right here at the beginning mander andovier helm also called ando and he is one of my favorite characters and then moving on to chapter three so three chapters three different povs but this one is aisling brightshine the godling and she is a godling with some special powers that are highly sought after and she is an mortal she has definitely led a tough life because of these powers and i'm interested to see what direction her character goes throughout the series we then move into an interlude. So the interludes are a chance for the author, David Estes, to interject some backstories of some of the characters, as well as introducing some side characters that don't necessarily have anything to do with the story as it is right now, but will most likely come up again as the story progresses. And then the next few chapters, we kind of switch back and forth between those three main POV characters before adding a little interlude in there. And then in part two, we have a lot of the same POVs from the first section, but then we also add Peony, Normandian, and Dragonmaster Dane. So Peony is from Odin. That is the kingdom that she is a part of. And she does have an older brother named Osri. And he is one of those characters you just want to smack upside the head. Yes, they like to pick on people just to annoy them and just to be aggravating. He's, he's one of those great characters that you just love to hate. <laughs> Not that he's a bad person, he's just irritating. And then a Dragon Master Dane is, of course, the Dragon Master. So he's kind of the head of the Dragon Riders. And he needs to marry. So there is an arranged marriage between Odin and Dragon's Mount. There are some really cool things about the people of Dragon's Mount. So one of the things that I think is cool is when the dragon and the rider are chosen together, the rider then dyes their skin to match their dragon. I just think that is so interesting. It's pretty cool. And then the mate of the dragon rider if they are not dragon riders, they only dye half of their skin. So it could be the right half or the left half, their choice. Kind of interesting. I, I find that very intriguing. <laughs> then we have another interlude that gives us a little bit more backstory and we kind of have this adjacent character that keeps popping up. Not sure where that character is going to fit in the story, but they're their story arc is interesting, so I'm intrigued. And then this is where some Easter eggs start to pop up for the Fate Marked series. One of the other side characters of note throughout the series is Lord Grimfire, who is one of the mages. Not so sure about him yet. Yeah, I'm still still making up my mind whether I like his character or not. Like he's he's well written and everything, but just do I like his personality? Do I like the choices he's making? I'm not so sure yet. We'll have to see as the book progresses. And then no other new POVs are coming in throughout this next section of the book. We are sticking with the same POVs that we already know. We just get more information and we're following them a little more closely. So in some areas, we've got some war. Other ones, we've got some political stuff happening. We have some secret things in the works with some of the other characters. We have some people captured and becoming slaves and trying to find a way to escape and get back to their homelands. And then when we get towards the end, we do have kind of a random POV come in just to give a little side story in there which is a kind of interesting it, it still fits with everything else that's happening and it's kind of an integral part of the story but it's a it's a new character that comes in and then we finally get a pov from gerard the young the other guard sibling and then we end with an epilogue and the postludes so the postludes i would not skip they're actually pretty integral into the story. I think they, they make the story more impactful and give you some more information. 
So we do get some backstory on the current POVs as well as some of their ancestors, which kind of helps you realize why they are the way they are or how they've gotten to be where they are now. And I absolutely loved this story and I cannot wait to continue. So I have read, by the time of this filming, it's very overdue, <laughs> but I have read the first three books in the Kingfall History series and they've all gotten five stars from me. Fate Marked was a five star st series for me. Slip I did love, that was sci-fi dystopian, but it was a four, four and a half star series. But this one is just, the world is so extensive and so immersive and the characters are, I just care so much about these characters. I love this series. So Kingfall, the first book in the Kingfall history series is five stars. And it may seem like there's a lot of characters and it sounds a little overwhelming on the surface. They're all introduced somewhat gradually and in a very natural way, and they are all very easy to keep track of. Each character kind of builds on top of the other. Something happens with one character, which introduces us to another character, and then from that character, we get to move on and then find out about another character or two, and it's it progresses very naturally. Seamlessly writing multiple POVs seems to be David Estes' superpower. <laughs> He just seems to be really good at it. His Fate Marked series, which I have right up here, uh, has uh, 10, 12 POVs by the end of the fifth book. And they're easy to remember who each of them are because they are all part of different kingdoms. They have very specific qualities about them. And I feel like they are all necessary to the story. Like it's not going overboard to adding a POV just to add a POV. There's a reason each of them are in there. Now, I first found David Estes through his Fate Mark series on Amazon. I was looking for a book to read and I stumbled across Fate Marked and it was free. And I'm like, well, a free fantasy, that'll be kind of cool. I'll go ahead and give it a try. And I now own the full Fate Mark series, the full Kingfall History series. Those are both five book series and the full Slip series, which is a three book series. <laughs> he's got a few more and he's got a new one coming out. The Forsworn Oath series, another five book series that he will be releasing sometime this year, I believe. At least the first book will be coming out somewhat soon. Yes, yeah, so the Forsworn Oath is supposed to, the first book is supposed to come out in September or October. And he is trying to get physical book, the ebook, and the audiobook to come out at the same time. But that will depend on the audiobook narrator, who is Timothy Gerard Reynolds, his schedule to see if he can get it done at the same time or not. But we are here to talk about Kingfall, not the Forsworn Earth Oath. But I will leave David Estes' website linked down below in case you want to check out all of his other books because he does have some amazing ones out there. And I would highly recommend them all. But that's how I found out about David Estes. And through David Estes, his recommendations, I have found Ryan Cahill, who is the author of The Bound of the Broken, as well as Ben Galley, who is the author of the Emanesca series. David Estes and Ben Galley actually have a couple of books that they have co-wrote together, and that is Demon's Reign and Demon's Rage. So David Estes writes a, a lot of fantasy, but he also has some sci-fi and dystopian books as well. So Slip is a sci-fi dystopian, and I did read that entire series, and that was really good too. So David Estes is known for his captivating storytelling, intricate characters, and stunning world building. And he takes us on a journey through Kingfall, where the characters are forced to make some impossible decisions through some hard times. They are thrust into situations beyond their control, and either fight their way out or succumb to temptation and turmoil. So I would definitely say Kingfall Histories is dark fantasy, not grimdark, because there is always hope and some light shining somewhere in the books, but definitely some dark fantasy, not, not quite Malazan or First Law World, but kind of similar vibes. So one of the highlights for me in this series is and the first book in general, just because it's this is where we get introduced to all of the characters, is the characters. There are so many great characters in this book, but I definitely have two favorites that kind of rise to the top, and that is 
Commander Endover Your Helm and Peony Normandian. So Peony is a, such a strong character. She's not afraid to speak her mind or try new things, which is great. Now she does have a physical deformity. She has a cleft lip, which people always make sure she knows that it's there, of course. But she also now has to submit to an arranged marriage and is going to be sent away from her kingdom and her people whom she loves to one of the other kingdoms in the Kingfall realm and to a completely different culture from her own that she doesn't necessarily know a whole lot about. From the start, I'd say Peony is a pretty well-developed character overall, but I love how David Estes just keeps throwing things at her to continue to sharpen her and help her to grow as, as a character and to hone herself. Now, Commander Andovier Helm, he is a military leader in the kingdom and loves his family. He has two kids and a wife, and he is very devoted to them as, as well as protecting the kingdom. Now, when a battle breaks out from one of the neighboring lands, he may end up losing everything, or he may gain more than he thinks. So I love the ups and downs that Ando goes through and the way he responds to the situations, whether it is a good response or maybe a selfish response. Like I just like how he makes it makes a decision and sees it through. And he definitely goes through a lot. <laughs> the other standout character is Roman, actually. He's this kind of a side character and he is there as a protector and helper and teacher and guide, mentor, friend to Samson Guard, one of the princes from, one of the sons of King Kronos guard. Now, Roman loves Samson like he was his own son and treats him as such, teaches him like he would his own, and will do anything to keep him safe. I can't wait to find out more of Roman's backstory and see how he came to this kind of position, and also just to see how this character is going to progress throughout the remaining books in the series. World building. I think Estes does a fantastic job with the world building, giving us a lot of information about the world, lots of descriptions, but without it being overwhelming or tedious. There's not so much that you're just like, okay, I got it, let's move back to the story. It's There's enough that's put in in the little snippets throughout the story that gives you a sense of the, the world without it all being just like this huge info dump in one spot, which I appreciate. I feel that the world of Kingfall is very rich and immersive. The magic system is interesting with the mages use a powder called Maginum, which they do mine for that. It's not, it's not something you can find just anywhere. You do need to search for it and it is somewhat rare and they do not have an unending supply. David Estes paints a very vivid picture of the kingdom of Kingfall and its surrounding lands from bustling cities to magical forests and each setting feels alive and also integral to the story. The magic system is also intricately woven into the fabric of the world, adding an additional layer and depth and intrigue. Oh, there's dragons. And I do love that David Estes does have some little Easter eggs thrown in throughout the book that do a little tip of the hat or a little nod of the head towards Fate Marked, that series. There's a couple of characters that you meet that you may recognize the surname of that it's not this, any of the same characters in Fate Marked, but they, they would be descendants of people from Fate Marked, which is super fun, and I loved that. Now, of course, you don't need to read Fate Marked at all to read Kingfall and vice versa, because they are set in different different uh, continents of the world. So it's still the same world, but different areas. So you wouldn't necessarily come in contact, but there are some references to some of the things that happen in Fate Marked, which is kind of fun. So if you have read that series, keep an eye out for those. I do really enjoy David Estes' writing style. I find it very accessible, very easy to read, as well as being intriguing and down to earth, I would say. It's not overly descriptive or too elaborate. The pacing of the writing fits 
what is happening in the story. So when you have a battle scene, the writing feels like it's it's faster and like bringing you forward and, and you get into that anticipation and your heartbeat starts getting a little faster and you find yourself like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And you have, you know, those times of high energy and moving forward while when you get to some of the other parts of the book that slow down and relax, you feel like, oh, this is a nice steady pace through this little section and it's a little slower and then something else happens and you move back up into this faster pace. To, so there's a nice little ebb and flow that feels very natural throughout the book of the with the pacing. And I do like some of those slower times because that's the, where the pace slows down a bit because that's when we get to dive into some of the characters get a little of their backstory maybe get get in their head a little bit find out what they're thinking and how they're feeling and and growing and their thoughts on the situation and seeing how their brains work which is always very interesting originally i had planned on taking two months to read each of the different books and yeah no that's that didn't happen <laughs> I started out I'm like, okay, I'm going to read one chapter today. That's it. I'm going to read one chapter tomorrow. That's it. And then within a week, I had finished the entire book and was ready to start the next one. It was just so good. I was completely immersed in the story, even with basically binging it. I just kept wanting to know what was going to happen next. I want to know more. I want to keep going. I don't want to put this down. So it was definitely a page turner for me. And I apologize if there's a lot of exterior noise. It's so beautiful outside. I have to have my windows open, but then I keep hearing cars go by and the birds are chirping, the cicadas are going. So hopefully it's not too distracting. The twists and turns and the reveals are really good. I like that they're not all stacked on top of each other. So a lot of times you'll find all of the twists and reveals and everything are at the end of the book. And this one has them spread throughout the book, which makes for a much more interesting and enjoyable read and it kept me engaged and wanting to know more and beyond the magic and adventure that is a kingfall themes of love and friendship and loneliness are explored as well as being unsure of your place in the world your community even not sure of your place in your family and there's greed and sacrifice hopelessness and hope that all resonate with you even after you've finished the book. So some of my final thoughts overall, Kingfall by David Estes is a captivating start to the Kingfall history series. And whether you're a fan of fantasy or you're just looking to immerse yourself in a new world, this book is definitely worth picking up. And if you would like a more spoiler filled review, please let me know and I will put that together. So David Estes' writing style is descriptive and immersive, transporting us readers into the heart of the story. His prose is fluid and engaging, capturing the essence of each scene and the character interactions. The pacing is well balanced, maintaining tension and suspense throughout the novel. Beyond its adventure and political intrigue, because there is a lot of political intrigue in this book. <laughs> King Fall explores themes of power and identity and sacrifice, feeling lost and feeling found, finding your place in the world. But I think these themes resonate well in the book and they help to add layers of meaning to the narrative and the character's journeys. Have you read King Fall or any other David Estes books? What did you think of them? I would love to know. Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this review, remember to give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow bookworms. And until next time, keep reading. Bye.